Hey everybody, welcome back to another video here at home, recordingmadeeasy.com and here on my YouTube channel. And in this video, I wanna show you something that I get asked about every once in a while when I'm doing my private one-on-one -on -one Zoom coaching calls with students and trying to help them learn how to use their DAW. And in this case, Studio One, they'll ask me um, a question like this. They'll say, um, see this vocal track here? It looks like it's recorded really, really quiet. I can't see it, it's so small. How do I turn that up? How do I see that better? Why is it so little? Why can I barely see any audio like I haven't recorded? So we're going to answer that today. I'm going to show you a couple of things that are probably for new people using Studio One may go, aha, I can't believe I didn't know that. But that's okay. When you're new to using any DAW, it could be frustrating. I understand. That's why I created the PreSonus Studio One Beginner's Guide image will come up on the screen here. You can check that out at homerecordingmadeeasy.com when I give you a free mixing course. That's right. Right at homerecordingmadeeasy.com, I want to give you a free mixing course. So make sure you go there, click on the button, get your free mixing course. And if you stick around to the end of this little video, I'll show you how you can not only get the mixing course, but also a really good discount on any of my PreSonus Studio One training courses. So here we are in Studio One, by the way, version five, and this will apply to any of the versions. So this happens quite a bit, more than once, I'll certainly say. Someone will record a track. Here's this tracking yellow and vocals, and they'll see that it's so little, the waveform. They don't understand. Why is it so small? I can't see it. How do I make that bigger? Did I not record it loud enough? What happens? Well, there's a couple of things you want to look at. First and foremost, if you want, just because it's small like this, it doesn't mean that you didn't record it well. If you watched my last video where we talked about setting your recording levels using this little input button here on the side and checking your input signal coming into Studio One when you're recording, just like my vocal mic is here, if you're recording somewhere around a negative 10, negative 12, negative 15 dB, which is always a good practice, you won't have to worry. You recorded it. You recorded it loud enough. And if it looks like it's really, really small, like it barely got recorded, here's a couple of things you can check. First and foremost, it could be something very simple that you are zoomed all the way out on the audio waveform. Let me show you. So if you come over here to the right hand side, it's hard to see this over here. Um, there's a little menu here. When you click, put your cursor over it, it says, what's it say? Data zoom. I think it says data zoom. If I left click, you'll see a little slider come up. And if I roll my mouse up, look what happens to the audio waveforms. Ah, they get nice and big so you can see them. Look how big they get. Oh my goodness, look how large that is. Now you can zoom in and you can see that you actually recorded something. You didn't record it very quiet and you'll see it does it to all the tracks. Now, one thing to keep in mind, a lot of people make this mistake. This does not change the level of the audio signal. This is simply a way for you to zoom in and zoom out looking at the audio waveform. It's defaulted all the way out. That's why it looks so small. So just go ahead and scroll up to your desired level and you'll be fine here and then you can see it better. Now, if you wanna turn up, if you, if you realize that when you play back this audio that it's really, really quiet and it's somewhere down here, let me just uh, play this uh, back here so you can see. And I got the volume all the way down so you can't hear it for copyright reasons. But if you look at the bottom here where the vocal is playing, you can see it's way down here. The audio was recorded very quietly, negative 33 dB. And if you crank up the volume all the way, it really doesn't get a whole lot louder, right? So you may want to turn up this volume so you can't look at the audio waveform and relate that to the meter and think that it's the same. It's not. You can make this look like I said, you can zoom all the way up and you think that's super loud, but it's not. Look at the audio weight, look at the meter. It's still running around a negative 34 dB. So this has nothing to do with that. Now the next question is, okay, I recorded it too quiet, Dave. I don't want to go back and re-record it. How do I turn this up? Well, there's a few ways to do that. I'm going to hit stop there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, there's three ways I wanna show you how to turn up the actual signal, and that's called clip gain. The first way and the easiest way is if you just highlight, just click on your, on your audio event, and let me change the color here so it looks, you can see this a little easier. Let me change it to blue. So you see when I, when I highlight this, you see this little handle here, this little square, and when I move my cursor over, it turns up to a little finger. If I left click on my mouse, look what happens. It's a zero dB, and if I move it up, now the audio waveforms are getting taller, just like on the zoom, but look what's happening. I've increased it 5.4 dB. This is actually turning up the level. And if I play back that vocal track again, watch the meter down here in blue on the track. Now you can see 
it's around a negative 24, not a negative 30. If I continue to turn that up while it's playing back, look what happens. It gets louder, physically gets louder. Oh, we're between phrases here. Here we go. Now we're like a negative 12. And then you may say, well, wow, now I can barely see it. It's so big. How do I shrink down the view? Well, you come over to the little slider on the right-hand side, and you now can turn this down and make it look the in any way that you want. So now you have the level physically turned up here, right? You turned it up about 14 dB, and you can see that on the fader, and you've adjusted your view so it looks appropriate in the way you want to look at it. That's one way to do it. Let me do Command-Z. And let me turn that all the way down. Oops, go back to blue. Okay, so now we're back where we were before. I turned it down, okay? That's one way to do just clip gain. The second way to do it is if you expand your mixer here by coming over here on the left-hand side, you see these little double arrows? If you left click, your mixer is gonna open up here like this. You can resize this, by the way. And there is a little wrench here. See the little wrench here where my cursor is? If I click on that, there is some, the, the way you can view some of the controls in the console. And if I come down to channel components, you'll see something called input controls. Now this is defaulted in the unchecked position. This is a global setting. Once you turn this on, it'll stay on from now to the end of time, unless you shut it off again on any session, this session or a new session that you start. If I click this, watch what happens above the tracks. See at the very top here, we now get, let me just turn it off so you can see, look at the top of the, the console. Okay, see that? So what happens when we, when, we, uh, when we check that? And we'll click the wrench again to close this menu. We get what's called a trim pot, and we also get our phase flip. So if I take this trim pot, I can now left click and I can turn this up. And even though the audio file, the waveform doesn't get any larger, I'm turning this up just like I was before when I was doing it up here with my little hand. See that? Now watch, I'll turn it back down to zero. I'm gonna play this track back so you can see the actual meter. Here, we'll, we'll play it back here, okay? So you can see again, right here, we're down here around negative 30. Now watch how as I turn this up. See, so getting louder and louder and louder and louder. Now we're about a negative 16. And you can see now our audio is louder. So we turned up the volume of the gain. It's called turning up the clip gain. We clip gained it. That is the same exact thing as coming over here and taking this little handle. What's the difference? On the little handle here on the audio event, you actually get the waveforms will actually expand so you can see them. So it makes more sense to you, right? If you look at this and you push it up and you see the waveforms get bigger, you know that it's getting louder, right? If you don't, you turn it down. When you do it here, the waveforms don't get any larger physically, but the volume still increases, okay? That's the second way to do it. Let me bring that back to zero. Let me bring this back to zero to where we kind of were at the beginning. Okay, that's two ways you can change the clip gain and make it louder. The third way to do it while we're here in the mixer view is we can use a plugin called the Mix Tool. PreSonus has a free plugin that comes with every version of Studio One. If I click on my browser and I come over to my effects tab and I go to my PreSonus folder, and if you scroll down, it'll be in alphabetical order and you wanna look for the thing called Mix Tool and here it is. I'm just gonna left click with my mouse button and drag it as the first insert. This will do the same thing as clicking the little face flip or turning up the gain here. But if you wanna use a Mix Tool, you can do this. You can turn it up here as well. And that will also turn up the gain. Let me turn it back down and play back the audio so you can see it on the meter. Watch what happens as I turn it up. See how it gets louder? Okay, so here you could turn it up 24 dB. You can also turn it up here, another 24 dB, and now look, we're clipping. So it's a compound effect, okay? It's not one or the other, it can work together, right? And you could turn it up here, like we did the first time. Look at that, oh my goodness. Now we're clipping the track big time, it's so clipping. So now you went from something that was completely unusable because it was so quiet, and between these three methods, you can now make the audio loud enough so it's work, it works in the mixing stage, okay? So that's three different ways that you can adjust the clip gain. All three of those things will increase the volume, some will increase the size of the waveforms, some will not, but always remember, this little slider here is nothing more than a view. It does not change the actual clip gain, it actually changes the view for all of the tracks, not just the one we're working on. That's another way to look at it. If you look at 
all of the waveforms as, as, as I use our Zoom. It does all of them, not just the one we were working on, the blue vocal track. When we do, when we do clip gain, it only changes what's happening on the particular track itself, not on all the other tracks. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. I've been asked about that before. It's usually one of those little dopey things that someone will spend an hour trying to figure out and they just can't figure it out. It drives them crazy. And then they get on the they get on Skype with me and I solve it for them in two minutes. And they're like, oh, thank goodness, thank goodness. And then they have a bunch of other questions on how to navigate Studio One and all the little tools and all the little tricks and all the little shortcuts and, the, and we'll spend an hour doing that. And you can do that. You can hire me as a, as a consultant for an hour. I charge by the hour. But you want to know a better way to do it? A better way to do it that'll save you half the money is just go out and buy my PreSonus Studio One Beginner's Guide where I not only show you this particular tip, but I show you many, many more. It's like 17 or 18 videos where I show you how to navigate, how to set up a session, where all the little buttons do, where all the little icon, icons do, where all the little hidden menus are. So if you're new to Studio One, you could get up and running very quickly. So because you stuck around to the end of the video, I want to help you get that course at a discount. So like I said at the beginning of the video, go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. First thing you want to do is get your free mixing course. It's worth 50 bucks. Take it. It's free. It's my gift to you just for visiting homerecordingmadeeasy.com. Then if you want to check out the PreSonus Beginner's Guide or any of my other paid training courses, whether it's Studio One related or not, I want to give you a 25% discount. Just use the coupon code YouTube25 at checkout. It will take 25% off any one of the training courses on my website. Again, it's my way of saying thank you for checking out Home Recording Made Easy. And until the next video, where we'll talk, take a look at some other things in Studio One that you may not know about, some hidden little secrets and gems. My name's been Dave with HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com. Thank you so very much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Take care, everybody.